Hello, everyone. Hello, good morning. Well, uh, so we are the Minerva Rockets team. We are competing in Kubruf, in the Kubruf beta uh, category. And we came here to present our CubeSat project, UFRJ satellite. So I'm Jonas. This is I'm, I'm Gabriel. Gabriel. He's the leader of our team, of a uh, competition team. Yeah. And uh, I, I have been the, the lead of the CubeSat project. And uh, we'd like to show you what we've worked on the last... Uh, <laughs> yes, the last year. So the last year. Uh, we brought some slides and yes. I think we have some time to uh, go through our presentation. And okay, so... We do have the slides on screen. Okay. So, when 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 creating our project, the first thing we did was to peruse the file that Kubruf sent us, uh, show, uh, telling what what kind of what objectives our satellite should be able to accomplish. So, by reading the different categories, we we established as the goals of our mission to survey and characterize the Martian surface to improve the communications capabilities of uh, the infrastructure already present on Mars. So Mars orbiters, Mars landers, uh, potentially Mars rovers. And uh, the other objective is to serve as an, a possible useful asset for any kind of future manned Martian mission. So with these goals in mind, we set out to create the design that could accomplish them in a compact package as necessary for a CubeSat and as in as efficient manner as we could. So uh, a mass orbiter, a mass orbiter mission as many different, many hard challenges it must overcome to walk. We must face cosmic rays, we, uh, and it's not inside the magnet, a magnetic field like uh, uh, an Earth orbiter would be, because Mars has a very, very, very weak magnetic field. So it's under threat by solar rays, cosmic rays. It needs to cope with being farther out from the sun, so solar panels do not generate as much power. So there is a big power issue. How do you power a mission in orbit of Mars? It needs to communicate with Earth, which is not something trivial because you are between 0.5 and 2.5 astronomical units. So with those challenges in mind, we set out to try and sort what we could do. We wanted to take pictures of the surface of Mars we wanted to collect the spectra of the surface and of the atmosphere. And we wanted to communicate with things on the surface, things on Earth, other orbiters, other satellites. So we have these goals. And how, do, how can we accomplish them? Well, we started making our mission architecture. The first thing we need to do is that we need to get our cube set uh, in Mars orbit. So you need to take a, a home and transfer when the launch window is appropriate. You need to be carried, uh, as CubeSats are, you need to be carried by uh, a larger satellite and be deployed into uh, Mars orbit. So we searched through the future Mars missions uh, that are orbiters, and we selected these three candidates. Uh, we selected these three candidate missions to carry our CubeSat. We have the Hope Mars mission from the United Arab Emirates. We have the next Mars orbiter by NASA. And we have the Mars orbiter mission 2 by India. So all, all three of these are polar orbiters. They, their orb, orbit in, in relation to Mars equator is very inclined. So as Mars rotates and a satellite goes around it, you can actually you can actually see the entire surface over time so 
this would be an ideal orbit for our, for our CubeSat. Yes, in order to uh, survey the, the whole planet, uh, you need to sweep uh, the surface. And as you have an orbit, your orbit parameter needs to uh, go along all the uh, di different latitudes and longitudes. And, and longitudes in order to map a sphere into a strip of images. Mm -hmm. Then you can reconstitute the imaging from the satellite into a projection to the surface. So that's the, that's the, the idea main of idea of uh, remote sensing through images. And also uh, our approach then is to, uh, even though uh, this uh, work comes as a TRL uh, one, two, and three in NASA's technology readiness scale, which means uh, we're presenting a, a concept for operations and a concept of mission and not necessarily uh, laboratory experiments and, and in fact, uh, integration of systems uh, is done at present time, but we sought to uh, use in our project mostly components that were uh, already validated and space uh, space approved and tested in uh, previous missions so that we can uh, work mostly on integration on a higher level of uh, architecture work instead of developing low-level systems and uh, each component individually. So this uh, mission uh, in mostly uh, uh, is a composition of already uh, validated and well well tested subsystems. Mm -hmm. So we, when we made this project, despite being a theoretical project, we wanted it to be as grounded as we could make it. So almost everything is off the shelf components. So what does the, the Mars Orbiter need to do its mission? We need a way to communicate with Earth antennas. We need some way to survey the surface of Mars, spectrographs and uh, images. We need to make maps, so, uh, altitude maps. So we have radars. We need a way to power the satellite. So we have solar panels and we need some way to move the satellite, so propulsion. And that also includes uh, attitude control. So this is a simple schematic view of what our CubeSat is. So I'll briefly go over the design. So our CubeSat is a 6U satellite, CubeSat. Uh, this was chosen based on the existing NASA CubeSat mission, Marco, which, by the way, it's going to uh, arrive at Mars in about two days, so we'll see if interplanetary CubeSats actually work. So this was based on the Marco. We saw th this is the closest thing that has been made to what we want to do. So let's base our design around it. So it has three solar panels, each one about 20 by 30 centimeters. It can generate around 26 watts uh, at Martian orbit using very conservative values for efficiency of the solar panels and the irradiance at Mars orbit. And uh, it has uh, avionics, which you can see in pinkish. I'm colorblind, is this pink? Yes. <laughs> so it has a propulsion system that uses butane as propellant, which is the reddish thing at the bottom of the image. It has a uh, low gain antenna by, yes, at the bottom next to the thrusters. Uh, it has a laser communication systems, which is the orange thing by the top left. It's the box. Uh, this was based on a, an existing uh, CubeSat project also. You have the radar, which is also our main communication systems to Earth. This is a microchip, microstrip, a microstrip phased array antenna. And uh, it can be used also as a radar system to take altitude measurements of Mars. So we chose to do a phased array antenna because we noticed from early on that power was going to be a very serious concern for our CubeSat. 
So it would need to stay oriented towards the sun to maximize how much power it was getting. And if it needed to be optimized to get solar energy, it would not be able to point the antenna, point itself to present the antenna optimally to Earth. So we thought, how can we get around this? And the solution we found was that if we use the phased array antenna, which is able to actually change the transmission angle of the antenna without actually without actually changing the orientation, the physical of orientation of the antenna, you could actually get, even if Earth was here and our satellite was pointing straight ahead, it can communicate with Earth all year round. So that's one of the solutions. Uh, in blue, we have uh, the, our scientific payload, which includes uh, uh, spectrometers. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll just skip ahead because we do have a break, uh, a breakdown of what our CubeSat has. For structure, it has the six-unit CubeSat structure by ISIS. We and uses the the, ISIS, the paired CubeSat and the P pod yeah, for ejection. For ejection, same company for band, band, you know maximum integration. For power, we decided to use the same company that made the Marco solar panels, which is the which is the dynamic designs, I believe. MMA designs. They do have the option of making custom solar panels and the one picture is the closest one to what we want to make. Uh, we use batteries by the uh, uh, EXA, which is a, a Chilean company, I believe. Very reliable, it has a long history in CubeSat flights, I believe since 2013. Anyhow, so for avionics, we are using as the brain of our CubeSat. Uh, uh, I think you can explain this better than yes. me. So we have, a, an, an actually, this is one of the components which uh, can be customs, uh, 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 consumer of the shelf. Mm -hmm. um, it could be consumer of the shelf. Uh, but we have an electronics design team uh, in our uh, in our the rocketry team. Uh, yeah, yes, we have, uh, and we develop this uh, what, what we call is a multi-mission platform, which is a a highly modular uh, electronics board with a, a, mi a microcontroller with high processing power, uh, uh, high storage. Uh, internal uh, inertial sensors for mm -hmm. uh, attitude orientation uh, so we have an accelerometer we have a, a gyroscope and also a magnetometer for a compass and uh, a barometer but for yeah, space it doesn't you don't actually need uh, it doesn't work the idea is that it can be used in as many projects as possible yeah so this multi-mission platform which is called uh, pmm for short uh, the the whole idea is so that it can be used uh, in the CubeSat, also in the rockets, also in balloons, uh, atmospheric what? surveys, mm -hmm. uh, and future on uh, later on you will see our EVA project also featuring our the PMM, PMM board. And this is the heart of the processing unit uh, in which we can uh, sense internal sensors and also external sensors from, from other subsystems. And uh, push all the data through uh, uh, telemetry uh, and uh, the telecommunications mm -hmm. uh, modules inside uh, PMM. So, so in our CubeSat, in the UFRJ set, we actually have a highly redundant PMM because we are using four sets of the core components of the PMM. This is a way to prevent the CubeSat from radiation damage. So avoid any logical errors that could arise. And it's also important because if one of the PMMs burn out, we still retain full control of the satellite. And control is managed from uh, what, uh, what uh, as in an algorithm, our algorithm. Uh, yes, an algorithmical, algorithmically based uh, decision set, making yeah, decision from making voting. Process. So if you have multiple processing units and most of them agree onto something and one of them is damaged, then you can use uh, voting based decision, uh, making. decision making, making to 
exclude uh, any faulty parts from yeah. from taking bad decisions. So, uh, other than that, our avionics include uh, start uh, sun tracker to best orientate our solar panels and a Geiger counter to automatically shut down the satellite to prevent damage in case of a solar storm. It can also be used to do science, orbital science, uh, for the magnetic field and cosmic rays, what have you. For attitude control, we have reaction wheels. Uh, they are redundant also. We, have, we can have one failure. Uh, these are manufactured by Blue Canyon Tech. They also include star trackers. So it, together with the sun tracker, it's a redundant uh, orientation determination system. For propulsion, we are using a butane propelled uh, cold gas module, which does not yield the greatest mm. delta V. Mm. We had toyed with the idea of using electrical propulsion, but due to the power, the diffic difficulty of managing a high power output in mass orbit, we had to scrap the idea, unfortunately. Yes, and for I, I just wanted to explain for our viewers, uh, since they uh, a uh, good uh, separation from uh, why do we have two attitude control systems actually uh, the idea from reaction wheels is to orient the spaceship so uh, or satellite rotate the satellite in, uh, around its center of mass so while in orbit you are in the same orbit but you want to look to a different direction what what we uh, or point the satellite into different directions maybe for uh, solar panels maybe for imaging, maybe for some sort of calibration, Science uh, yeah. or um, even to redirect the, the main pro the chemical propulsion yeah. system. And this, uh, and this chemical propulsion system, uh, which is based on uh, chemical reactions, is for orbital corrections and mm -hmm. so it's to, to change, maintain the orbit, change the orbit and mm -hmm. uh, to maintain it. So uh, we, for communications, since we also wanted to use this as a relay system to make communications with mass-based infrastructure easier, we have three communication systems. Uh, this also gives us a lot of redundancy. The three systems are a low-gain antenna to communicate with the surface of Mars and other objects in close proximity to our CubeSat. We have the high-gain antenna we already commented about, which is our main way to communicate with Earth and it can also be used to communicate with infrastructure around the orbit of Mars. And we have an experimental laser communications module. Uh, radio is very uh, attested in our technology. It is quick, it works very well, but laser communications, due to the way it works, can give it a bandwidth that is simply not possible with, the, with radio. So you can send a lot of data, a lot of data very fast. So, but it, it's not long range, so it, it, it can only be used with the, to communicate with the surface or infrastructure in orbit. So, the most, mostly for uh, the communications applications, uh, it is important to note that if we can have multiple satellites in a cluster, in an orbital, uh, what I would say, a mesh communication of satellites, you can relay information from different positions of the planet in high data links. So. Uh, if you, we we place multiple versions of the mm -hmm. uh, same architecture and they can communicate and send information to a rover or to a ground station mm -hmm. or maybe to even our Cobra Fnout yep. using uh, also uh, communication to a satellite which relays it to another one and then this beams the information back to Earth. So it's mm -hmm. interesting ways to provide the global coverage mm -hmm. And we, we can, from this, build uh, more protocols for uh, what we can say a, a proto-internet service. <laughs> so an internet, Mars internet. Mars internet. And it also opens new science possibilities too, like uh, synthetic aperture radars and many other things. So the payload of our primary design, the payload is modular. We can actually change this if we want. But the, pay, the main payload we're going with is an optical imager to take uh, actual pictures in the visible spectrum of the surface of Mars, and an infrared spectrometer that can, use to be, that can be used to actually find out the composition of the soil and the atmosphere of Mars from orbit. 
And with with these two two components, uh, the optical and the infrared spectrometer, we can actually take many many measurements, not only from uh, the chemistry of the atmosphere or the chemistry of the soil, because we can uh, compare signature signature from different chemical uh, components, but also we can uh, use uh, image processing to determine uh, uh, geographical features, mm -hmm. landing sites, uh, places that we can also uh, build things on the surface. Yes. Well. So if we want to explore the planet and give path to future missions, this is a very important uh, part. Yes. Is is the the main uh, proposal, yeah. th which is the it's payload the main purpose from our, of the of the CubeSat. Yes. So. So. As we said before, we wanted to make the, our design as grounded as possible. So pretty much every single component used has some kind of precedent in space exploration. The laser communications is based on the Aero Cube 7 by the Aerospace Corporations that was launched, I believe, in 2017 or 2016. The, the CubeSat itself is entirely based around Marco by NASA, which we already meant, talked about. And the phased array idea has been implemented before in the form of Messenger, a Mercury orbiter by NASA. So those are proved technologies. The design challenges that we have to face are getting power in Mars, which we talked about a lot. So most of the time, our CubeSat will have to spend oriented towards the sun. And that's that can be a hurdle to the science it can make. But it's something we can get around. Uh, the laser communications module is going to be a problem also because there's not there there aren't any off-the-shelf components for laser communications. So we we'll probably have to develop this in-house or get a partnership with someone who knows what they're doing. And the antenna, the fa the microstrip antenna, is also going to be very hard to make because there is no precedent. We will need to build it, actually design it and build it ourselves. And that's something complex, it's not trivial, but it can be done as we it has been demonstrated. The future for our project is actually sitting down and refining everything we've done so far and actually creating a, a, a design we can build. We can actually create a, something, a, a plan to actually build this if we have the funding and if we have the, the technical know-how help to do this. It's, uh, we believe it's feasible. We believe it can be done. Yes, and after this is the what would be the first phase, uh, which is planning. Mm -hmm. And then we start uh, refining this plan. We start making energy balance, balance uh, considerations and many, many improvements on, on, on our design to mm -hmm. reach a uh, more mature integration and uh, walk towards uh, the proposal of a serious project to mm -hmm. uh, government government agencies and uh, procure f funding for mm -hmm. a real mission, uh, which is why uh, we, uh, many universities uh, seek the CubeSat architecture for uh, for, the, uh, for their projects. So uh, it used to be a very uh, complicated issue of uh, building satellites from scratch but with CubeSat uh, architectures, we can uh, use highly modular applications. You, uh, we can we don't need to develop the whole Hopefully. the whole range of subsystems. Yes, you can uh, uh, pay companies which provides already these services in a very very effective and uh, well tested and validated, uh, and actually work on integration and mission mission data, mission results, mission uh, architecture, and uh, actually spend more time on uh, the mission itself more than uh, the engineering behind it. Uh, it's it's not uh, an easy task, but uh, it's a much uh, easier uh, situation than what would be 50 years ago to design a satellite yeah. from from nothing. Oh, yeah, so from nothing. Now we have a very good opportunity to, in, in a university, to to create something, to yes. actually build a satellite, and send send projects to. We have uh, even Brazilian, uh, even Brazilian uh, universities, uh, which already have sent uh, cubes, uh, cubesats to uh, Earth Earth orbit, 
we have some uh, have partners and also uh, fr friend universities also who want to send uh, CubeSats to the moon. And why not propose the first uh, Mars CubeSat? So exactly. So we, we aim to fly higher for the, for the right to fly higher. So yes. let's try flying to Mars. Why not? Uh, yes, so I think this is a good way to conclude our presentation. Uh, we are yes. open to questions and please also uh, uh, send us email. Uh, our email is, uh, mi uh, our team is Minerva Rockets and our email is Minerva Rockets uh, at poly.ufrj.br. Mm -hmm. So this is our uh, university email. Also look for our Facebook and Instagram accounts, mm -hmm. which we post a lot of content. Yes. So you can follow. Keep up to date to our projects. Track our, our work. And then, yes, so no. any questions? And if you, if you, if you are not uh, an investor and you are just a layman, don't, be, don't feel afraid to ask us questions. We have so much we can talk about this skip set. So we'd love to hear your questions. I think that's it. Yes. I hope you, you liked our presentation. Um, so where do we see questions? Okay, I have some questions for the team. I'd like to to know what was the most in, most difficult topic uh, your team faced during the the project. Difficult. The most difficult. Yeah. So the question is uh, the most difficult topic we face in our project. Uh, one of the I, I can start with one of the natural difficulties, which is to uh, look for aerospace uh, information. Yeah. Many, many past projects uh, have great results. However, the engineering details are somewhat very restrictive and mm -hmm. you cannot access uh, full technical reports from uh, agencies yes. and previous projects because there is high value in this uh, information so there is industry uh, uh, the industry will to protect this value mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of barrier barriers barriers to, to actually find the data find information find good quality uh, reports we have uh, seen different reports from universities from their uh, builds but uh, not many from uh, Ser uh, serious projects that have been through all all the stages of the funding. all the stages so and finding information is a, a a first problem yes and it's it's actually even a problem with off-the-shelf components as as strange as it sounds because for many of the shelf components you actually need to send them a quote oh we are interested in buying your component can you please tell us data about it so the data is not there so you can read it a few are a few of them are, but not many. So yeah. you need to propose, uh, so make a commercial offer. Yes. And then request details, even for uh, the launch vehicles. You do not have a full explanation. We have some, we actually have some models. Uh, so this is a cargo uh, spacecraft. And you do not have a full, uh, this is from SpaceX Falcon Heavy. And this is from Soyuz. And uh, you do not have a full documentation available to describe how the spacecrafts, uh, how, how do they, uh, where do you place your satellite inside the CubeSat? I mean, so, the, the CubeSat design specification, they do go into some length about how it's done, but you actually need to go and reach out to the, to the you know, 
to the organization or the company that is sending, that's launching things. There's a queue, so you need uh, you need to uh, go through some meetings to ask for more details. They will ask you some documents to uh, to to go forward into uh, uh, establishing a commercial commercial partnership, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, very quickly you need to sign some NDA so what we're doing here today is a presentation of our work yes, which for it, the sake of science being well known by uh, by the people yes. so we need we want to spread uh, our work and to make it uh, uh, no we want to make it known information wants to, to be free it's, it's like extending your hand to other people so that they mm -hmm. can uh, reach to what you have produced but when you go to the industry, it's uh, very fast. You need to sign an NDA, which is a non-disclosure agreement. Mm -hmm. And then everything from there on is secret. And then you cannot share technical details with people. Uh, so it's always a challenge to uh, work in airspace and do science, uh, sp science spreading. Yes. There is diff uh, diff difficult ways to, to do this, and it's not everything that can be released. So. so in summary, to answer your question, it was data gathering. It was probably one of the hardest aspects of our work. The design aspects, due to being largely theoretical, they did present interesting challenges. We ne needed to, came up, to come up with interesting solutions, like the antenna, which I'm, I liked that, uh, that solution a lot. But yeah, data gathering was probably the hardest one. Uh, any more questions? Yeah, I, I, I believe hope. there might be more uh, questions. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest challenges of developing technology here. But I have another question. Yes. Uh, apart from Mars, where do you believe are other great opportunities for CubeSat solar system exploration? For the use of CubeSats in other, even sol other solar systems. Okay, so I, I am actually an astronomy undergraduate student. So the use of CubeSats to explore space is something that interests interests me very, very much because it's something that can be of direct use to astronomical research. So due to being very cheap, due to being very small, due to being very light in terms of mass, they can be sent to places that no other hardware has been sent before. So you could imagine a CubeSat being sent to trans-Neptunian trans objects to do science on the, uh, on the TNOs that we don't know anything about. We, we've just seen as blurry images. Maybe you could even send one as far out as the Kuiper belt. That's that's more speculative. The technology needs to be validated, and the the Marsco, that the Marsco, which is going to, as we mentioned in the in the stream, is going to actually arrive at Mars uh, in two days, in the twenty sixth. It's going to be a very important step because if they walk well they'll prove that interplanetary CubeSats can actually walk and they can actually be a thing. And from there on, the world, the entire world opens because satellites were always expensive. They were always massive. And as every, I, I suppose most people know, mass is something very restrictive in space travel because you have Tsiolkovsky equation of, of, rocket, of rocket propulsion. So how much you can change your velocity, which is how you get to places in space doing orbital mechanics, which is also my area. Uh, you, the highest proportion of fuel to mass, the more efficient, the more, the farthest your rocket can go. So if you reduce the mass of the satellite uh, and increase the propellant fraction, so, so like if you have a big launch vehicle for a very small satellite that can do the mission, it can go very far. So perhaps we could have uh, a swarm of CubeSats exploring the Jupiter or Saturn moons, and that would be amazing because there's some very, very impressive science to be done there that we haven't been able to do to the cost of sending things there and due to the time it takes. So, as with the miniaturization of electronic components and also mechanical components, you can achieve uh, uh, 
even smaller and smaller uh, systems which perform the same functions that otherwise uh, huge. Uh, just look at uh, how electronics and cell phones and everything is going uh, shrinking, all, the, all yeah. the way uh, shrinking. So if you can have a small satellite that performs the same task as a huge satellite, then you can use the same launch vehicle and trade some yeah. mass into more fuel mm -hmm. and then you can go further away or you can have instead of one big satellite you can have a swarm uh, of smaller ones yes uh, many more uh, opportunities for different uh, uh, universities or different agencies to send uh, each one as most as a nano satellite mm -hmm. which is uh, and what would be a CubeSat, an end satellite, and the costs from launch are shared among uh, many people. So you have a, a, a much more the, accessible. Yes, way the to costs get go down, and then you can have more missions, and then you have space, and uh, the space area opening up, mm -hmm. and being more accessible to even companies uh, investing in sending many, many satellites to constitute networks of telecommunication systems or imaging systems. So we have many examples on Earth, uh, Earth orbits from uh, already many companies sending uh, private, from private sector satellites. And then you, what you see is a, a popularization of space. So this, this is a very interesting thing and uh, well, it opens up new possibilities. Yes, exciting new possibilities, and brings us to work into the subject now. Yes, so it also allows us to do what we we love. So, uh, more questions. Very yeah. good. Uh, it was a really great presentation. Congratulations! Thank and you. And I'd like to know if you want to say some a few words before we finish. Well. Yes, so uh, we'd like to thank, uh, first of all, Cobruf and our listeners to, who are viewing, viewing this uh, this presentation. Uh, so thank you all for the effort to pro uh, to produce this event, to produce this opportunity of uh, showing uh, projects to share information and to uh, engage universities and students into looking into space uh, space technology uh, we would also like to thank our uh, Cobruf Betes team which uh, is not fully represented here but so we had help from from many people who who are supporting this work and making this possible also our whole Cobruf, uh, our whole Minerva Rockets rocket team which is our uh, rocket division uh, from uh, propulsion uh, rocket uh, launchers well the, the whole rocket architecture to launch the cubesat so we are starting small compared to the soyuz but uh, we aim to one day fly higher, higher to higher. fly higher and also we'd like to thank uh, the university our partners sponsors everyone who contributed to help this uh, this work being done so a big thank you to uh, everybody to who contributed to to this and even uh, the viewers who mm -hmm. are following us on Facebook, Instagram, this this plays a big, uh, big Play help big and a big role into supporting our work, so that we can uh, uh, showcase our activities and developments. So mm -hmm. every like and share into our posts it is of great value and uh, makes us go forward. So mm -hmm. thank you, everybody. And I think I'll. I'll end with a quote from Arthur C. Clarke. We must, we must clean the gutters in which we live, but we must never lose sight of the stars. So, thank you. Thank you very much for being here, for listening to us ramble for the last 35 minutes. Yes. And uh, thanks again to Kubruf for having us. Thank you very much. I think we're still alive. Maybe they've left us here forever.
smile and, and shake. Smile and wave. Imagine being an astronaut and being live 24 7. Oh my god, please no. Oh, that is, it's, 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 oh, Jesus Christ. Yes, you're in orbit now and they have the cameras on and then you're, you're left in orbit. But do they have live. the cameras inside? Or. I, well, I seriously hope not. There's many pages for tracking ISS and then. Hmm. I'm not sure what happens next, so. So, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? <laughs> How's the family? Uh, well, what oh. should we do? God. We don't know how to end the broadcast. We are, <laughs> <laughs> we are at the mercy of Cobruth now. We can show something. Well, we can, yes, we can yes. show off something. Let's show some stuff. One so. of our members printed this out. This is the the engine of the first stage of the Falcon Heavy. It's a, a methane and liquid oxygen powered engine. Fantastic stuff. I think we're truly live. Yeah, I think we're still live. Apparently, Kubrov they are telling us they are having some issues. Um, so I guess we can show off some things we did. Yes. So thank you, everybody. This is our. The end. Yeah, this is the end, I, I, I suppose. It was the end. It still is, I guess. So, bye. Let's try, let's try this. Bye.